I saw what happened there. Yeah, you saw what happened. We're recording. And we will have yeah. to give a shout out to Terry too with her t-shirts. <laughs> Absolutely. I saw your shirt right away. Yeah, thank you. Nice shirt. All right. Welcome to another episode of Third and One. Today's guest is the public address announcer for the BC Lions, Vancouver Whitecaps, and Vancouver Warriors. He's also worked for the Vancouver Canucks and has done voice work for various other boxing and MMA events as well as video games and commercials. Please welcome to the show, Don Andrews. Hi, buddy. Thanks, thanks for having coming, me, Ryan. Thanks for coming on in the show today, Don. So what have you been up to during this? It's nice uh, to see you again. I haven't seen you in quite a while. It, is, it has been quite a while. What, four years? No, actually, Lions games. I see you in the crowd, so. So what have you been up That's to true. during the, uh, the, the COVID pandemic? Um, I don't have too many new hobbies. Uh, you know, I haven't learned to do too much stuff. I haven't taken up any knitting or anything like that, but, uh, <laughs> I, I'm good. I mean, I got young kids, so my kids are still at home. My wife is a first responder, so she's still working. So she's busy, still doing her thing, keeping busy. Uh, I, I stay at home, generally take care of the kids most days. And I would have them off to school, so now they're home. So on the days that she works, I get to take care of my kids some more. And then when she's home from work, she gets to take care of the kids and hang out with the kids. And we all do our thing. And we just, yeah, we're just kind of getting through day by day like everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Uh, my work schedule is just picking up now. We're going to be uh, uh, moving back more to full time now. So, uh, yeah, it'll be back to uh, back to the same routines, which will be nice. Good for you, man. Good. I'm, I'm happy to hear you might be back to work right away. Yeah. So what made you recognize that you had a voice for public address announcing? Oh, I knew I didn't have a face for it. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, it's funny. I didn't really, I myself didn't realize it was something that I was going to be so passionate about when I first got into, into, into broadcasting stuff. I love sports and I always have. Uh, I've got a good history of sports with my dad and I played, you know, hockey in school. I played lots of soccer in the field. I played lots of football. I, I played lots of rugby when I was in school and stuff like that. Um, but I, I guess it really, uh, for me, I was in broadcasting school and somebody called me one day. And she said, I've, I've, we've got a job for you. And, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to school. Uh, I had been working at a radio station at the same time. I, I was working a job at the same time as well. And I thought, well, I can't. I'm like, there's no more work. I can't do anymore or else I'll die. And uh, she said, no, no, you, you, you got you to gotta come and, and do this because this baseball team that I work for is looking for a new PA announcer. And she said, and I know you love sports and you've always talked to me about how much you love sports and stuff. And I thought, yeah, I'll try that. Let's give it a go. So I went to Nat Bailey Stadium and uh, I went and saw the Vancouver Canadians. And at the time they were in the process of replacing their current PA announcer. And uh, I went in there and uh, it's a quick story. So I'll tell you, I went in, there was three people, myself, another guy that I don't remember for some reason and a girl who I do remember. And we all did our, like we, it was one of these things where you went in, they handed you a, a, a lineup to your go upstairs and call a batting order and a lineup, you know, for uh, the starting with the, with the team that's going. And uh, okay, I can do that. No problem. I love baseball. So I went upstairs and I did my thing and I came downstairs Everybody did their thing, and they came over, and they just said to me, you know, essentially, Are, would you like the job? And I was like, well, yeah, I love the job. This seems like a really neat thing to do. It's a, I, lo I, I love sports. Uh, I loved baseball. And uh, I was uh, I was wanting to get into this, this business and get into sports at this point. And uh, it was just it was a right fit for me at the time. So I had the pleasure of meeting you back in 2016 in Nanaimo at a boxing event. Uh, what are some of the different events 
games and commercials that you've worked for? Uh, um, it's funny you say that because I was just my wife and I were just talking about this not too long ago. I was once the MC for the 2008 Canadian Ismaili Games. Oh wow! Wow. Of all things, yeah. of all things to be yeah of all things to be contacted for. Um, it was through a friend of a friend, and they called me up and said, "You know, we really like it if you could come out and do this thing." And I thought, "Well, yeah." This is be terrific. So I went and I did it. Wow. I've been very fortunate to be able to do a whole bunch of really uh, interesting things that I wouldn't have necessarily been able to do had I not been A, in sports or in combat sports or working in the industry that I work in and stuff, you know, being able to be there for like, I worked in the American Hockey League and I was there uh, for like the very first ever American Hockey League game in Abbotsford. I oh, still wow. have, they, they gave us a little crest and they gave us a puck and they gave us all this fun stuff that went along the very first game. I have all that stuff still, right? Yeah. Um, I've been, I've traveled, you know, I've been fortunate enough to travel like this thing over my head, right? here is uh, the poster that I brought back from the MMA event that I did in Japan. Nice. Yeah, I remember you posting about that. Yeah, yeah really, really fun stuff. So I'm very fortunate. I, I, I always consider myself pretty fortunate that I get to do these sort of things. And I, you know, I worked the World Police and Fire Games. I think it was 2009, 2009, World Police and Fire Games. And I have a medal. They gave me a medal just because wow. I was there and I was helping out and stuff afterwards. They were like, here, you can have one of these. Yeah, that's cool. So I have it, I have it tucked away. It's a really neat little medal and it's, and it's a really cool little commemorative thing and stuff like that. So um, I worked the Olympics in 2010 a little bit. I did a little bit of a uh, little uh, MC stuff uh, at the Olympics and uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just, again, really fortunate. I consider myself very fortunate that I get to do this stuff. For sure. Yeah, it would be really cool to, I'm sure you've seen a lot of cool things. So what's your favorite sport to announce? Favorite sport to announce? That's a tough one because every one of them offers their own really cool, you know, element. Um, football. You can get really loud and you can get kind of rough and, and kind of crazy. Uh, same with hockey. With lacrosse, you can get right crazy, like just off off the top shelf, you know, not severely want to. They, they encourage it. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in other sports, you know, like MMA and stuff, you always want to, you know, it's, it's fun because you always want to get the crowd involved. And it's... Uh, it's fun to, to have the people respond when they do, but but I guess when it when it comes down to it, it's the one thing I always tell people. It's for me, it's the it's the interaction that I have, and I'm fortunate to get with the fans mm -hmm. mostly. And so for me, I think the most exciting one is the Whitecaps, right? Because twenty some odd thousand people respond when you say so. Thing. and it's really really neat and it's a really and it's a really the very first time it ever happened to me it was a really surreal feeling because you know you hear people in a stadium and they're usually really loud and you can hear crowds and 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 you 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 know what it's like to be inside a crowd to be loud and, and obnoxious and boisterous and 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 making a ruckus and then you sit upstairs where we sit especially where i sit at bc place you sit upstairs where i sit and and we're a little pushed back of the seats and the sound that 20,000 people make at once like that, it's just the, it's the neatest thing. It's pretty intense. That would be really cool. I've been dying to go to a Whitecaps game. I was hoping to go this year, but um, it doesn't look like we're going to get a season. So maybe next year. Actually, that's, that's not true. See, they're doing this, this uh, 24 team tournament in Orlando right now. Yeah, that goes from July eighth to August eighth, and they're actually uh, the, they have uh, in principle the idea to start the regular season right after that. Oh, okay. I didn't. I wasn't aware of that. I thought that tournament was a whole thing. I see. Okay. No, I thought it was too. Originally, when I when I thought it, uh, I, I'd done just a little bit of homework. I hadn't done enough on it. And, and when I first looked into it, I thought, oh, this is this is kind of bad because it's going to be like 
you know, 24 teams in one city and just quick tournament and it's going to be over in a month and that's MLS for the season. And then just recently I was reading up on it and um, the uh, commissioner, Don Garber, recently said, oh, here's actually, here's the, here's how it's all going to break down. And here's, you know, fingers crossed, everybody stays at home and does what they're supposed to do, washes their hands and, and, and plays by the rules. Um, they want to do this tournament and then they actually want to start like a truncated season after that. Wow. Nice. Yeah. So I'm hope- can. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm hoping there could be fans. Because, I mean, that's huge. It makes the game. I'd love to go to a game. The other, but, the other interesting thing that I heard, uh, and, and it goes in regards to the fans, the, the other interesting thing that I heard is if they sell you seats to go to an event, let's say you and I and five other people show up, or six other people. Let's have a nice round number just for that. So you and me and six other people show up, and we want to go to a, a hockey game. Well, we'll get those eight seats but there'll be two seats in between everyone until we're, you know, they'll put two seats in between everyone and the next guest. Gotcha. That's Makes a great sense. idea. No, that, yeah, that's a great idea. So you're limited capacity, but you're still filling the seats. You're still getting people in, you know, with the CFL, you being a big CFL fan, and I'm sure we're going to talk about it here eventually, but yeah, they're, they're, they're gate driven and they're ticket driven and no gate, no ticket tickets, no merchandise, no, um, uh, you know, concession, uh, no CFL money. Right? No, no, exactly. How they play the, how do they pay the players? Right. So, right. Right. yeah, I'm worried about that one. Um, yeah. Yeah. We will get into the CFL for sure. We'll get into that in a second. Um, do you have a favorite venue that you've worked at? Um, it was a place, well, I mean, I've, I've been in Smart Araneta Coliseum in the Philippines, where the Thrilla in Manila took place wow. with yeah. uh, Fraser and Ali way back in the day. Yeah. Uh, and I did an event there. And it just, it's a, it's an amazing place because the history in a place like that is, you, you feel it. You really honestly can feel this really weird vibe in there. They're the most amazing posters, these huge, 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 really long posters. Uh, and, and still to this very day, uh, are really representing the the thrill of Manila and 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 still pushing it a lot. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, I wasn't expecting you to say that. I thought maybe uh, I don't know, maybe GM Place or something like that, or sorry, Rogers Arena, right? But uh, no, that, that's cool. I'd be nostalgic for sure. So, do you ever get nervous when you're in the booth calling a game or public ad- address announcing? No, not anymore. I used to, you know, in the very beginning, you wanted to make sure you did everything right. But I think with the amount of time and effort that you really put into this, and I know a, a whole bunch of other PA announcers that are, are really, really good, that really, it's just the amount of time you put into it and the care that you have. And, and the fact that you really do honestly care that you do the job right. That's, that's it, really. Yeah. I'd be nervous if it was me. Um, there are some times where you get a little concerned at first, and then you realize that, well, if you just, you know, think about what you're doing and how to say the word, your mouth and your brain will suddenly connect together and, <laughs> and all the parts will come out in the right way. And, you know, um, Rugby Sevens, the, uh, the HSBC Canada Sevens tournament, yeah, it, it was very intimidating the first year, very intimidating. But I took it in stride, and uh, I managed to survive. And every year after that, now it's been easier and easier. And it's just, it's a tremendous tournament. Uh, there's so much of a challenge working that tournament um, because of the amount of international names and these superstars that are just, you know, uh, from from countries with names that you can't even imagine you'd have to try and pronounce <laughs> right so yeah it's it's awesome i love it so you must spend a lot of time behind the scenes before games and events working on things like content and name pronouncing then yeah yeah for sure um if i'm working a hockey game uh a football game uh Soccer game, uh, even basketball. I do some basketball for UBC and stuff like that. 
Um, you show up at least two hours before game time. At least two hours. You give yourself time to settle in. You read through. And I mean, this, I'm sure everyone else does it. They're, they're, everybody does it differently. And I'm sure some people follow along and do similar things. But for me, I, I get in there. I read the entire script. I read my script from top to bottom. Back and forth, top to bottom, left to right. All the words in there. Make sure I know what all the words are. If there's words in there that don't make sense, I go to the person that wrote the script and say, can we do something about this because this doesn't make sense? Or, or what were you trying to say here? Or what are we getting at? You know, that sort of thing. So, um, but yeah, yeah. Do you have any stories of uh, mishaps or any funny situations when you've been announcing? <laughs> um, two. One, one was just recently. It's not that bad. It, it, it was just a little slip. It was a total mind slip. It was one of these things where my mind just kind of... Uh, and then there's another one that happened at baseball. I'll tell you about in a minute. So the first one just recently, last year's uh, Canada, uh, HSBC Canada 7s. There's a, a band that was playing, and it, it was time. My producer said to me, "All right, we're gonna go, we're gonna throw to the band. I want you to introduce them, let the crowd know who they are, and then we'll take it and they'll play for like 12 or 15 minutes. It'll be great. We'll be able to take a break, wander around." I said, "Okay." He said, "Okay, name of the band." And I said, "Okay, I got it." And I waited for my cue, and he cued me. The name of the band. She's, I even have to double check and make sure I don't get it wrong right now. <laughs> the, name, the name of the band was uh, Dr. Strangelove. Okay. So my, so my cue was, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Strangelove on the plaza, whatever it was. That was what I was supposed to say. But for some reason, you know, and it, it had been a bit of a longer day. It was a little later in the afternoon. I'd been there since about 8 o'clock in the morning, and I'd only done probably about 14 rugby matches by that point. Yeah. I, uh, I cracked my microphone and pointed over with my magical hand, and imaginary thinking all the people could see me pointing at the band, and said, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Feelgood. <laughs> 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 and uh, and and I just kind of went with it. And I clicked on the microphone off, and I realized that every eye in the room was now looking at me. Yeah. And I looked over at them all, and they were looking at me like, "No, no!" And I was like, <laughs> what, "What do you mean? Was I not supposed to introduce the band?" They were like, "No, you were supposed to introduce the band, but that wasn't the name." <laughs> so, yeah, that one went bad. It wasn't horrible. It wasn't horrible. The band couldn't hear me because a lot, the crowd was so loud. I'm sure there was a bunch of really confused people thinking that, you know, there might have been some sort of Motley Crue or Motley Crue cover <laughs> band of some kind that will show up, but I have no idea. I have no idea. It was really funny. The producers were on my case last this year. They were on my case about it. Remember, it's not Dr. Feelgood. Uh, it was terrific. We had so much fun. With it. They, point, they poked fun at me for hours after that. That was great. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. The other story was when I worked for the Vancouver Canadians. And I'll, I'll try and kind of shorten the story and make it not quite too bad. But um, I came into work one day and, and, a, and a, a cable had been cut. So it had to be replaced. And I just happened to have a, a cable in my bag with me. Um, the microphone didn't have a switch. So the cable that I had had a barrel switch on it. So, little doo -doo 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 -doo, so you turn the microphone on and off. Yeah. So I used that cable. Uh, at some point during the game, that, that barrel switch failed. So my microphone was on. And uh, are, is, is your podcast <laughs> PG rated? No, we're Can good. I mean, <laughs> No, you don't. You don't have to worry about cussing. <laughs> okay, good, good, because it's the best part of the whole story. All right. So, uh, so I, I uh, have the microphone in my hand, and, I'm, and I realize the microphone is open. So I'm doing my best just to kind of keep it down beside my leg, and doing the baseball game. And you know, if you've ever been out to to um, single A short season baseball, you know, it's it's developmental baseball. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. That's a nice way of putting it, and and it can get a little, it can get a little tedious sometimes. 
pitchers put a little effort, a little more effort than they should sometimes into, you know, trying to trying to keep a runner on first or or you know trying to try to beat a batter with with you know like some crazy pitches instead of just going through the the motions. And so a game is going on and uh, there is a runner at first and the pitcher is on the mound. The Canadians are at bat and he is he has marked this guy at first base and he will not take his target off him. he is going and he will not stop and he's throwing the first he will not stop and he's throwing the first he will not throw a ball across home plate he's throwing the first throwing the first <laughs> well after about i don't know there must have been about 10 of them i uh i i finally get to the point where I, I'd kind of had enough. So I, um, without thinking, I blurt out, oh, throw the fucking ball already. Wow. And, uh, you know, microphone down by my side, of course, but I, I realized that I've said this and I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> not, that's not. So I, as, as you do, just play it off. You're like, whatever. You know, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. And and about thirty seconds later, the radio came on. Hey, uh, anybody hear that? And I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I have no. And you know, it was quick enough to to have been, you know get out of there at the end of the game and and you know not have to worry about any sort of repercussions or anything. And uh, nobody ever really came up and said we heard it. You know, we heard him say it or whatever. So I, I did manage to escape pretty unscathed. So, but that's about it. That's about it. I've been pretty careful. So the whole stadium heard you say that. I don't. Nobody can. Nobody can <laughs> deny nor confirm that. Really. So <laughs> we'll go. We'll go if they didn't hear it. We'll just. We'll play it safe. That's my thinking, right? Yeah. Uh, what kind of advice would you have for someone that's looking to get into public service announcing? Sorry, public address announcing. Um, I always tell people, do it. You know, do it. Like, if you ever wanted to do it, if you ever going to have an opportunity to do it, and you're okay being in front of a group of people, and you're okay, you know, microphone in hand, and able to, I, I always tell people, do it. Why not? You know, it's a, it's a, it's, I don't know. For me, it's a really liberating feeling. I like it. You know, you you saw my work uh, at the boxing event. I yeah. enjoy my work a lot, and I'm okay with it. I'm I'm quite okay being out and open and and you know presenting myself like that. Um, and sports give me that opportunity. I love it. It's it's a it's a really unique thing that I, I get to share with people. I think. Yeah, so, sure. but advice. My advice, just to sorry, just to follow up on that. My advice, of course, is to always tell people just do it. Like if you get an opportunity to do it, or if you can. I, I told someone else. I, I mentioned to someone uh, that if he was interested in doing things at the university that, that he was working at, he should get in touch with the people that run the sports departments and the, you know, the. the I, I guess technically. It's just, it really just kind of focuses around the sports departments. Like, I think of UBC as my example, and their sports department, that's who you talk to when you want to do anything there. So, um, and, and he got involved in it and was doing some stuff as a mascot. And then the next thing you know, he got a job doing some more stuff where he was more of a presenter, uh, you know, being out in the court and being able to do stuff in the crowd, uh, which then helped him get a job working for, he's now one of the two hype guys that works for the Warriors. Uh, he's done some stuff for the World Junior Championships. Uh, just a young kid that, that you know, advice I gave, the, the same advice I gave him is what I'm telling you right now is, I said, then you really want to do something like this? And he said, I really would love to do this. I want to be like an, an in-stand host. And I said, well, then tell these people you want to do it. Get in touch with these people and tell them you want to do this and be that guy. And he's, he's done himself a really good job. He's, he's worked himself into a really good position where when there's an event going on and the normal group of people aren't available, he's always there. Wow. It's working out for him. That's, that's excellent. That reminds me kind of a crazy P for the Lions. Right. 
he's now working for the Canucks. He is now working for the Canucks. You're right. Yeah, he is. Sorry, Don. How many games have you done for the Canucks? Small handful of this. Point. Yeah. Small handful. Yeah. Yeah. Did some preseason stuff for them. Um, Al Murdoch does a terrific job. That's Al's job. He is 100% the guy. Uh, I'm just really fortunate that every once in a while, when maybe Al's got a conflict or they just have you know too much going on, um, that I get the opportunity to slip in and and help out. And it's uh, I feel very fortunate that they pick me to sit in for a guy like Al Murdoch for sure. All right, so we're getting near the end of our show with uh, Don Andrews. So that means it's time for some quick hits. Uh, so Don, what was your first car? Fine. Oh, uh, 85 Capri. Worst thing you ever bought. What was your worst purchase? Ninety-five Mustang. Ninety-five Mustang. That's on my list of things to buy. How come? Why was it the worst thing you ever bought? Just a lemon? Was, or? Yeah, unfortunately, you, you no one. It was around the time you 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 know the body style. Yeah, so you know that I, they've just yeah. changed from that older, more rigid body style to the, the more swooping and the smoother and the rounder parts. Yeah. Look, rather. Look. And so I bought one of the first generation ones. I was like, uh, wow, this thing's wicked. I want one of these things. So I bought one. The doors were sagging. The hinges were breaking. The locks weren't working. Um, it's just really unhappy, man. I was really, really, really <laughs> unhappy with a lot of it. That's unfortunate. Yep. Uh, favorite music artist? A band called Clutch. That's funny because I was playing some Clutch in the truck one day and Jen absolutely hated it. I can't remember the song and she's like, what is this crap? I'm like, it's Clutch. And she's like, really? it's terrible. Yeah, she's uh, like, it's, wor it's worse than Eagles of Death Metal. Exact words. Oh, see. I'm a I'm an Eagles of Death Metal fan too, so yeah, so am I. Yeah, big time. Uh, have you ever seen him live? I have actually. Um, Jen's first concert was Queens of the Stone Age and Eagles of Death Metal in Victoria in 2018, I believe. And it was it was a great show. It was nice. One, yeah. Nice. See that right there? Yeah. That is from. Uh, May 14th, 2000 at the Starfish Room. Queens wow. of the Stone Age. Unreal. It's also autographed. You lucky guy. Where is it? There it is. Here we go. Wow. That's awesome. It's my brother's photo. Holy crap, that's cool. Wow. Uh, so yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big uh, sludge rock, stone rock, uh, you know, whatever, however they need to classify it. Clutch, Psych big, big fan of clutch. Yeah, I think it's even like, well, in terms of some psychedelic rock even, I guess, and yeah. Yep. Whatever you want to call even it, daughter, I, I like it. My daughter absolutely loves clutch. Nice. She's six. <laughs> she probably hears it a lot in dad's driving <laughs> or in the house <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah for sure they love it they absolutely love it it's great <clears throat> i just got into them actually i found them on spotify one day going through music and uh i listened to one of their albums anyways and i really enjoyed it so um <clears throat> if i can make a suggestion yep. go and listen to their very first album it's just entitled clutch yeah Put your headphones on, settle in. It, yeah, I've been a fan for 20 years. Wow. So they've been around for a while. They're, yeah, and they're phenomenal. We've seen them live. My wife and I have seen them live lots. Uh, and they're amazing. They're amazing. They're still doing what they've been doing 20 years later to this day. They still put out good albums. Uh, they just recently did a, uh, they did a thing called Live at the Doom Saloon. Uh, for $9, I bought a virtual ticket, and I got to watch my favorite band in their studio do like a 35-minute show. Holy crap. 
Wow. Yeah, that was excellent. That was excellent. They had three other three other bands, two other bands or three other bands that started up for them. But yeah, that yeah, was excellent. Wow. I think that's what's yeah. uh, made things difficult. I moved back to Port Alberni from Victoria in 2010. And right. um, I think that's what made things difficult was just the lack of live shows, the lack of musical talent that comes through here. Um, I mean, I, I saw Tool, I saw, I've seen the Deftones, Nine Inch Nails, Stone Temple Pilots, you know, like all in Victoria. Um, and it was great. And I love, you know, love going to live shows. But being up here, I, I think the biggest act we've seen, I think, was probably Matt Good in high school. And I don't think there's been too much other since then. So, right. yeah. Wow. So, yeah, it can be difficult. And then, too, I mean, going to BC Lions games is hard, too, coming from the island. We're looking at, you know, getting up at the crack of dawn, sure. catching a ferry, getting into Vancouver, um, going to the game. You can't go home that night. No ferries run that late, so you're staying overnight in a hotel. Right. And uh, it gets expensive. Right. So, I mean, I'm lucky if I make oh, the three, sure. three or four Lions games a season. Um, but if I lived in Vancouver, I'd have season tickets for sure. But Right, right. It'd be way easier, but I can't imagine the extra cost out on the ferry. Not yeah. Cheap. Fuel, yeah, it gets expensive. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Do you believe in UFOs? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What sc What scares you the most? Oh, what scares me the most? Um, I don't know. What scares me? Uh. Some days humanity. Some days just the 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 actual human race scares me. But you know, for the most part, not much. Not much. You know, um, I've been through a few things in my life where you know um, I've definitely been scared. Uh, I have two kids, so. Uh, the birth of your children can be very scary, for sure. Yes. Uh, knowing that my kids are going to go out into the world one day, that scares me a little bit. You know, um, just a little bit. I'm not. I'm not worried. I'm not going to have to tether them and, and keep them from, you know, doing their thing or whatever. But you know, there's always that thought. You 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 have these little, you know, protective bubbles over your little loved ones, and then one day you're just going to kind of let them go. And, you know, hopefully we'll uh, send them in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. So I guess one of my biggest fears is probably heights. Um, 2001, I had a really bad construction accident right. and uh, I fell 45 feet off a balcony and uh, I landed in a wheelbarrow. Wow. I landed in a wheelbarrow that I'd put there that morning at 7.30. And I could have put that wheelbarrow oh, no. anywhere oh, on the no. job site and I put it right where I landed. And I landed in that wheelbarrow and I saved my own life. 45 feet. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy. Wow. Uh, broken feet. That is crazy. Wow. Yeah, collapsed lungs, seven broken ribs. I was on WCB for right. two years. Um, I had blood clot issues. Uh, it was pretty pretty long road to get back to work. Um, and I then bet. They, yeah, and then they, they wouldn't retrain me. WCB said, "No, you're going back into construction." Uh, and shortly thereafter, I qu I'd quit my job, and I said, "That's enough. I can't I can't do this anymore. It was yeah. just too painful." So, yeah. But I, wow. I, I, sh I should write a book about it. Yeah, falling 45 feet and saving your own life. Pretty crazy. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're here, man. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, me too. I mean, if it wasn't for that wheelbarrow, I mean, I should have that thing wow. gold-plated and hanging in my living room, right? But I don't know where <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. So we'll do a quick shout-out to... Find, to uh, find a little one and keep it as a good luck shout. Yeah, right. A quick shout out to Terry Strawson for these gloved up promotions t-shirts. Thanks, go, Terry. Terry. Thanks, Terry. Hopefully, well, thanks, uh, hopefully we get another boxing event. That'd be yeah. that'd be nice. Yeah. Let's see what happens. I'd love an, any event right now. Yeah, me too. It's getting a little stale for sure. Yeah. And that's that's why I started doing this podcast stuff, was uh just to use up some free time. So this is terrific, man. Thank that's you so much fun. for having me on. You know I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Don. Um, I mean, your 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 name came to my mind when I thought, you know, where can I start with this? Who can I interview? Um, nice, thanks. I thought some, you know, some 
some football players. And I thought, well, Don's indirectly involved in sports, right. you know? So I thought, hey, what, what the heck? I always appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. I, I always thought it was neat, too. I'd be at the Lions game, and I'd be like, hey, I know the guy announcing right now. That's Don. And, and it's funny because I always thought that you were always on the other corner of the stadium. So that well, the last game I was at, I'm like, Don, where are you at? And you're like, I'm behind you. And I'm like, oh, there you are. <laughs> it, it's, it's an interesting dynamic in BC Place because for football, they put me really honestly at, at like the 45-yard line. At the uh, West Airlock, like in the West Air West End of the the stadium, yeah, I, I'm I'm at like the 45 yard line. It's terrific. It's right in the middle. You can see the whole field everywhere. Um, but for the Caps, we sit a little further down towards, like almost right in the East End, or sorry, in the West End, above 210, 214, I think it is. Okay. Uh, so you see the pitch from this way instead of this way right why, why why would that be why, why not the same location i don't know i have no idea i have no answer for you i'm sure there's an answer if i talk to somebody in the stadium i'm sure i would get an answer a clear answer but i i, I don't bother asking i never bother asking i just go to work and i do my thing I, I get to go to sports and and hopefully we'll be able to go back to sports again really soon uh and uh and we'll be able to you know cheer on our teams hopefully I hope so. It's nearing the end of our show with Don. Uh, just a couple last things, Don. I was going to ask you, um, get back into the CFL. Uh, do you think there's going to be a season? Uh, I don't know. I read the thing that Randy Ambrosi, the CFL commissioner, had said, and, and he's talking in, in, in a sense about a truncated season. Um, you know, as, as I had said, maybe instead of doing 10 games, everybody does six games and then there's shorter way to pack it all in and they have the great cup in november december i mean i don't know i have no idea i, I can't even imagine how they're gonna work so yeah yeah it's crazy um and i know too they were asking maybe for a potential bailout i guess or some some money help from from the government um and for for a sports league for professional teams I don't know if I necessarily even agree with, with giving them money for that. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, that, that's, that's my two cents, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what they can do, but they definitely need to have a season, I think, to have some kind of revenue because uh, you know, butts and seats put money in their pocket and pay, pay the players and everything else. And yeah. So I hope so. All right, Don, thanks a lot for your time today. I appreciate you doing the interview with me. Absolutely, Ryan. Thank you so much for having me, man. You know, I appreciate it. Uh, if you need anything from me, always ask. Uh, I'm happy to help anytime. You know that. Awesome. Thanks, Don. Oh,